Okay, so picking up where we left off, we're now going to add the player character. So let's go to Game Object, 3D Object, Sphere. So once again, we're using uh, placeholder graphics. Just move that up to the top. Now, we're going to make it smaller because we don't want it to be as wide as the line. So let's drop it down to like 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 0.75. And again, once you get the mechanics down, uh, once you get it functioning, you can always go back and replace this object with uh, your own um, proprietary graphics. Let's lower that a little bit. Now let's go ahead and add component and I'm going to add physics, and I'm going to add a rigid body. I'm going to get rid of gravity. What we're going to do is, now that we've added that rigid body, just like with the camera, we can access that through a script and make the uh, sphere work, uh, or should I say move in synchronization, in sync with the camera. So that's vitally important. You don't want the sphere to be getting ahead of it or fall behind it. It's got to stay exactly synchronized with it. So let's right click, create C sharp, call it move orb. Click on the sphere, put move orb on it. Open move orb. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this exact line from move cam. Copy that, but we're going to put it in the update section save it and that should actually give us the basics the basis for our movement because we added the rigid body for velocity we access the velocity via the new script just like we did uh, for the main camera and there it is so it's important that it's not getting closer to the bottom nor getting ahead of it nor getting larger you want to make sure it is synchronized so that looks good now we want to be able to control this. So we want to be able to move it left and right. So to move it left and right we need to add key codes. Key codes are variables that let us assign a key and uh, th and then when the key is detected as pressed that you can then have something occur. So public key code move L public key code move R so move left move right the script is attached to the sphere so the sphere will now show those two key codes so now we just have to sign it we're going to use typical WASD so A will be left right will be D and now what's going to happen is when we move left and right, we're going to be changing the horizontal velocity. So the moment that's a constant, we're about to change it to a variable. So public float, just in case we want to use a decimal. And it will be uh, H-O-R-I-Z -E for horizontal, V-E-L for velocity and it will start at zero since we're currently starting it at zero. Now, what we're going to do is we want the horizontal velocity to change when that key is pressed. So, if input dot get key, and we want get key down so it only checks once the single frame that the key is detected is pressed down. If you just do get key, it's a rapid fire situation. We don't want that. And we'll say move L. So if the move L key is pressed, then we want something to happen. We want we want to move it over to the other lane Changing velocity is a little bit messy because it's not exact. 
Um, so you have to be, unfortunately, you have to be a little bit more careful with the calculations here. So this is the kind of thing that you're probably going to have to fine tune over the long run. We just want the basics. So we want to have horizontal velocity be set to negative 2 because you're trying to move horizontally left. Let's come up here, change this to horizontal velocity. But when it's moved far enough, you then want it to stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create a routine down here and then we're going to call it. So outside of update, outside of start, I enumerator I'm going to give it a, uh, a name, so call it stop slide. And it will be uh, new return oops, yield return new wait for seconds. We want it to wait just say 0.5f, so half of a second. If you're using a whole number, 1, 2, 3, 4, you don't have to add the f, but since it's a, a decimal you have to add it. And then when that happens we want horizontal velocity to go back to zero. So in other words, make it move negative. So let's click on the camera. So make it move negative so it's going to move to the left, but when it's moved far enough, stop. And now we have to tell it to actually do this. So uh, start coroutine, stop slide. And yes, you have to do both sets of parentheses. You have to put the name. So the the coroutine has parentheses, parentheses in it. Okay. The start routine, routine, you take that whole thing, including its parentheses, and you drop it into another set of parentheses. So if the key is pressed, horizontal velocity is set to negative 2, so it gets applied. And then it says, OK, go out to this coroutine. This coroutine says, wait half a second, and then set it to 0. So we'll see if that's too fast or not. Save that. press A. There we go. That looks pretty good actually. We won't know for certain until we have uh, more indication of exactly um, where the lanes stop, but just eyeballing it, it looks pretty good. So same thing now. If get key move so right move, so basically we just took this whole thing and we repeated it with one change, well two changes. We're saying, okay, is it the right key that's being pressed? And if so, we want it to move positive two. Oh, sorry. Move L. Move R. Okay, so left, right, right. Now, simple problem, and that is that the system isn't keeping track of what lane it's in. It's just moving it. So we also have to add a track. We also have to add a variable to track what lane you're in. So public. So public, let's just do int, and we'll call it lane num, and you start off, left is 1, 2 is center, 3, so it starts at 2. And so what happens is in these uh, two sections, so we check to see if the key is pressed, we want the lane to be adjusted accordingly. So if you're moving left, then 
lane num minus equals 1. In other words, take lane number and subtract 1 from it. Now we come up to the top level and we say and lane num is um, if it's if it's lane 1 we don't want it to be able to be moved over so it has to be greater than lane 1 so if you press the key and the and the variable that's tracking what lane you're in as long as it's greater than 1 then go ahead and subtract it otherwise you could just keep hitting and go off the left side and we don't want that so now we have to make a similar change for when you hit the right key lane gets increased plus equals one and we want to make sure that you're not too far on the other side and lane number is um, less than two and I think that should do it so now let's run it one more time We'll press left, press left again, good. We'll press right, right, no, it's not right, it's not correct for the right. So, less than three. So the one problem with this code is that even though we use get key down, if the player rapidly hits the button, it's still uh, it's not a rapid fire situation as far as Unity is concerned. It's seeing those individual key strikes. So this would happen repeatedly even though it's in process. So in other words, we have to do one more thing. We have to lock the player out from movement while this is uh, being performed. So let's create one more variable and we'll do public uh, we'll just use string is going to use like yes or no so public string um, uh, we'll call it control locked and it starts off as no as n so control locked so what we do is when you hit this control locked will be set to y Control Y will be set. Uh, control locked will be set to Y, and then when the time passes, then we'll set it back to no. So to make this actually do anything, though, we now have to check for that new variable. So up here, we're going to add another and. And that's one of the complexities you're going to notice is that it has to be a double equal sign. One of the complexities you're going to have to notice is you really have to adjust. I don't want to call it player error. Well, let's face it, players, they're going to, you know, they're going to hit a button, button repeatedly, things like that. So unfortunately, you're going to have to spend a lot, a lot of time um, adjusting for all those things that players might do. So even if the game uh, doesn't say they can do it, you know, people are human. Uh, they're going to rapid fire. They're going to hit repeatedly. Uh, and so you basically have to adjust for that. And that doesn't need to be there. Just zoom in a little bit more so you can read that more easily since we made a change. So, uh, double parentheses, input dot get key down, parentheses, move L, double parentheses, double ampersand, single parentheses, lane num greater than one, parentheses, double ampersand, uh, parenthesis control locked equals equals no double parenthesis so if this looks a little crazy each value you're checking for each variable has to be within parentheses the input has a separate set of parentheses within it and the whole if statement except for the word if itself has to be surrounded by parentheses so if it seems kind of crazy that's what's going on so I believe that should work now
So we'll just do left, right, right, right again does nothing, left, left, left again does nothing. And so I'm rapidly hitting back and forth. And you can see that there is a delay where it's um where it's still moving the opposite direction. So that should do it for this lesson. So we've added our player character. Again, placeholder graphics is just a sphere, but it's moving in synchronization with the camera, and now you can move it left to right. So the next one we're really gonna start doing uh, jumping, dodging, um, uh, and we're gonna start adding the obstacles as well. So that should do it.